Good morning, Bayside. It's a pleasure to be here to talk about our church. Um, the church has its up and downs, uh, but if we read in Matthew 16, 18, where God says, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on the rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will never overcome it. It was a confusing verse because I thought God doesn't build his church on one man, but I think he was proclaiming to Peter his mission to pre, uh, spread the gospel to his world, and I think that's what he has called us to do. When I was in third grade, I moved from the country to Williams, and a godly lady that I later said my grandmother, which I didn't have one at the time, but she took us to church. And in those days, the businesses were closed, but the church buildings were open. And you saw businessmen, doctors, everybody was in the church buildings. But when the businesses opened up, those attendance numbers went down because other things came into place in people's lives instead of God. So as I look at today, I see where we are in a challenging time, just like Paul was when he made the 180 degree turn to follow Christ and build people's lives to follow him. I believe that the challenges before us today are somewhat like that. We haven't been in prison, we haven't been shipwrecked, we haven't been put in a lot of places where Paul was, but the times are challenging. And so I think that this time we need to see where what we believe, where we are with God, and use the downtime to give us a, our report card, so to speak to see where we are in our lives. A time of reading God's word, praying, and then really being remorseful for anything in our lives that God is not pleased with. I think when the church doors open that we will be a stronger member for that church. More in love with Christ, uh, more motivated and energetic for the things of God. Mm -hmm. We have some things in place like growth track and life groups and uh, kids ministry and youth groups, but maybe we should look at a different approach to maybe a kids club for the younger grades. Uh, maybe more family get togethers and events so that we become more bonded bringing others alongside us. Maybe our life groups can introduce non-church members into those groups and we can be uh, a people of reaching others for Christ. The times are challenging and I applaud pastors and leaders and others who are in making these decisions uh, trying to see ways of promoting Christ, but God is the victor, God wins, and we should look at that. So, what choice do we have? We have, can choose Christ, or we can choose to be down on our luck, so to speak, or look at the negativity of the times, but we know God wins, and we should be making our way towards that mark of an A plus, maybe, of being, having said of us, well done and good and faithful servant. So, what will you choose? Will you choose Christ and what he has for you and be committed to making the changes that will bring you closer to him? Or, Will you not choose him? The choice is yours. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your love for each one of us. I thank you that you have brought us through this safe and healthy. I thank you for the ways that you will guide and direct our lives in these days. I pray that we will be 
worthy to be called your servants and your children. Help us in our time of need, help the hurting, help the lonely, and help us to never give up because you don't give up on us. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.